Okay, so we've talked about how we can get post-acquisition value and customer lifetime value given uh, the following assumptions on how many purchases a customer will make, when they'll make them, how much profit we get from them, how much we spent to bring them in in the first place, and the discount rate. So the next question is, how can we get all of the other various uh, and a variance of CLV. So I'm going to start with residual lifetime value. Now for this, again, the, the game is to look at the value that's going to be coming from the future. So right now we're at time point 180, and uh, we know that there's going to be then two purchases that happen in the future. So we're going to ignore these three and just look at the time, over here. time from time to now. So again, we have one purchase that's happening at time point 290. That is 180 days from now. So that's what I'm going to compute over here. I've got one purchase that, that's happening at time point 310. That's 130 days from now. And so just like before, I'm just going to change all the colors. Got my variable profit, discount factor, the present value times the variable profit. So, the variable profit coming from the purchase at time point 290 is 50. This one is 100. So, the discount factor is going to be equal to. 1 divided by 1 plus my daily discount rate raised to the power 110. And same thing over here. And I'm going to turn these into numbers. So then the variable profit present valued is going to be variable profit times the discount factor. And so then the residual lifetime value is going to be equal to um, of those variable profits, or 144.4. Now the HV is the complement of RLV. This is the historical value relative to today. So I'll split time to now. We've got these three that happened in the past, so we're going to ignore what happens in the future. Time to now is going to be 180 now minus these times. So I have this purchase that's happening 55 at time point 55. That's 125 time points before time point 180. So as before, I've got my make this all black. variable profits, 5, 20, and 2, 5, 20, and 2. Really, it's a future value as we kind of move these cash flows forward as opposed to discounting them backward. <clears throat> and so the way that we're going to get that is we're going to get the discount factors, which in this case is going to be equal to 1 plus the daily discount factor raised to this power. Just let's make this all very explicit. That number decimal places and I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste special the formula. So again for this purchase for example it's happening uh, 30 days before the present time <clears throat> so I'm discounting it at that daily discount rate forward 30 time points. So these future values are going to be Variable profits times the discount factor. Point. 
formula. So then the HV is going to be these, where we then also <clears throat> account for CAC. So I'm going to say minus the future value of CAC, which is going to be <clears throat> this 50 times 1 plus discount factor. Again, this is happening 180 time points ago. So I'm going to raise this to the power of 180. So the HV is then going to be equal to the sum of all of this. Negative 24.8. So the 90-day CLV, this is again a, a finite horizon CLV. So this is going to take into account all the purchases that happen within the first 90 days. So we see we've got all these purchases, but only these two happen in the first 90 days. So we're going to ignore these and just take into account the value that's coming from these first two. So i got time. I've got one and I've got the next one. Again, I'm just doing this to make it a little easier to see. We have our variable profit, which is going to be the same 5 and 20. Present value of the variable profit is going to be this divided by 1 plus my daily discount rate. So that's power. So then the CAC. Fifty. So ninety is going to be equal to the sum of all of this. We get twenty-five point three. Sales path is the same as path, except. We're going to base it off of revenue instead of variable profit. So in every other way, it's going to be the same as the original path calculation. So I've got time. I've got 0, 55, 150, 290, and 310. Now instead of variable profit, it's going to be sales. So I'm going to go back up over here to revenue. Paste that formula over. So these are all the revenue figures. Discount factors, again, they're going to be the same as before. So I'm just going to pull them from here. Present value of sales is going to be sales times the discount factor. Sales path is going to be the sum of the present value of the sales. Subtract off CAC. Next up, undiscounted CLV. This is going to be the same as CLV, except we're going to ignore the discount factor. We're going to assume the discount factor is effectively zero, which means we're just going to sum up all of the profits that happen in the future. 
because I have time. Zero to three ten. I've got variable profit, which is going to be equal to these figures over here. I'll just put the discount factor. We know it's just going to be equal to 1. So it's effectively something we just ignore. I'll call this the, the present value. Because <laughs> we know it's not really being present valued at all. Which is kind of what we started with. There we go. It's going to be undiscounted. That's going to again be the sum of the quote unquote present values. Subtract off the CAC. That's still 50. And that gets us PLD. Again, you see that a lot in gaming. And implicitly, we saw that in the Peloton S1 filing. Repeat CLV, time. So this is going to be, again, the, the CLV when we ignore all of the profit and the CAC associated with the purchase that births the customer. We're just going to incorporate all of the other purchases. So it's as if we're just going to ignore this and just take into account these purchases. So I'm going to ignore that first purchase, and I'm going to just get the value associated with all of the other purchases. Time, variable profit, same as before. This is again going to be the 20 divided by 1 plus discount rate raised to the power associated with the number of days since that purchase took place. No. Then we have is going to be equal to the sum of the present values over here. And the net CAC is kind of the complement to repeat CLV. It's everything that happened in the first purchase. We're going to take into account the CAC, but then we're also going to credit against it the variable profit that we got from that first purchase. So CAC had been 50. So we take that 50, multiply it by negative 1. But now we're going to subtract off the variable profit that we got from that first purchase, which is, in this case, five bucks. So the CAC is then going to be equal to oops, this should be times negative one. So we spent fifty to acquire the customer, but we know that we're going to get five off that first purchase, so it's as if we're kind of paying 45, not 50. So again, this is something that we saw in the Peloton filing, and it makes a lot of sense. It's very important to, uh, to think about what is the, the cost of acquiring a customer net of the value that we get on the first purchase. Yep, so those are all of the calculations that, uh, that you have to go through to get all of the various variants of CLV. Uh, it could be that in practice you'll see kind of combinations of some of these. Uh, like for example, you may see an undiscounted sales path uh, show up somewhere. Um, so you know, all those different uh, kind of combinations of these variants are also possible. Uh, but hopefully this kind of lays out a framework for thinking about uh, how we can do the calculations for each of them and how they're different from what I would say uh, CLV and post-acquisition value are. All right, thanks so much.